Now at five, a tense encounter between a local deputy constable and two men going viral tonight. That lawman is out of a job now. It seems like if there are lights there, they ought to be working because it was clearly very hard to see the other night. Dozens of lights are out along a Noblesville street tonight. We are finding out why and if there are plans to get the lights back on. And then the new plan in the works to get even more people to take the Indigo Red Line. The latest findings from Call 6 Investigates. This is RTV6 News at 5. Working for you. I got my right to do anything I want to do. I'm a police officer. Now at 5, a Lawrence Township deputy constable fired after this viral video. An Indianapolis man recorded it Tuesday saying he was wrongfully stopped. He reached out to RTV6 to share it and hold law enforcement accountable. RTV6's Megan Sinktorum spoke with him today. I got my right to do anything I want to do. I'm a police officer. These are the heated moments between a Lawrence Township deputy constable and two men in a car. The video was recorded outside of the Nordstrom Rack on 82nd Street. The men in the car say the deputy constable watched them check out in the store and then followed them to their car to get their license plate. That's when the men pulled around to the front of the store and the now fired deputy constable approached them. But you didn't pull the license out or I'll hit for a backup. The men refused and asked what they did wrong, but they never really got an answer. Their cameras were rolling the whole time. Eventually, an IMPD officer shows up for backup and tells the men they're free to go. After this video surfaced, the deputy constable was fired, but the men involved say they don't think that's enough. All it does is, to me, is try to put a little Band-Aid on it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, I don't, it's not a vindication, it's not anything that's like, oh, well, that won't happen again, and, you know, this is so impactful that it has changed the way we're going to operate. We'll have much more on this story coming up tonight at 6, including information from law experts on what your rights are if you find yourself in a similar situation. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. Well, Lawrence Township Constable Terry Burns would not identify the deputy in the video, but released a statement saying he was terminated last night when the video was brought to my attention. I did see the video and made the decision immediately, and that pretty much speaks of my reaction. Tonight we are following a developing story from Southern California where two students are dead after another student opened fire at a high school. This happened in Santa Clarita. A 16-year-old girl and 14-year-old boy died. Three other students are injured. Police say the 16-year-old gunman shot himself in the head and is in grave condition. Today is his birthday. Police say he was armed with a 45 caliber handgun and used the last bullet on himself. No details were released on a motive. This happened at about 7.30 this morning at Saugus High School. Santa Clarita is about 30 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles. And here in Indiana, a student was injured in a knife incident at a Hendricks County Middle School. It happened this morning at Cascade Middle School. A Sheriff's Department spokesman called it an isolated incident involving one student pulling a knife and cutting a second student. The injuries to that student were minor. The student with the knife was detained. An Indianapolis mother who survived a duck boat sinking disaster is once again demanding answers as a new federal report shows the tragedy could have been prevented. Tia Coleman and her nephew lost nine family members in July of 2018 when a duck boat sank on Table Rock Lake near Branson, Missouri. An investigation led to 17 charges against the boat's captain, accusing him of failing to assess incoming severe weather, putting lives in danger. Now, a new report by the National Transportation Safety Board says the duck boat industry was aware of safety issues with these amphibious vehicles almost two decades ago. And the NTSB is calling for a change in the design of duck boats. Officials say the canopy over duck boats Seven, the one that sank, made it difficult for passengers to escape the vessel. 17 of the 31 people on board drowned that day. The report says many of the life jackets stored in the canopy were found unused. So the report is calling for the removal of the canopies and for the Coast Guard to take action to make sure duck boats can remain afloat in an emergency. And Tia Coleman released a statement to RTV6 which says in part, quote, 
The duck boat and Coast Guard's failure to act on the NTSB's recommendations to remove death trap canopies and improve the buoyancy of these boats killed my family. Coleman goes on to say, I am publicly requesting the commandant of the Coast Guard to meet with me to discuss these recommendations and work together to save lives, end quote. Several duck boats have been stopping, uh, stopped doing business because they can't get insurance to cover their operations. Meanwhile, Tia Coleman and her family continue their multi-million dollar lawsuits against the owners of Duck Boat 7. RTV6 is working for you after a Hamilton County woman reached out asking why dozens of streetlights are not working on a busy Noblesville street. She says it's a safety concern and the lights need to be fixed. RTV6's Nicole Griffin is finding out what is being done to get these lights back on. Lining 146th Street, just east of State Road 37 in Noblesville, are dozens of street lights. But at night, you can see in this dark shot, many of the lights aren't working. So Monday night, I was getting off at of 69 and around 8.30 at night, and real snowy, and I just thought, wow, it seems a little dark out here. Lee Abernathy, who lives in Noblesville, first noticed two or three lights out on 146th Street, and then she started counting. It was probably maybe 50. During the day, you cannot tell that these lights are out, but I drove to the area Wednesday night and counted at least 40 street lights out along 146th Street, just off State Road 37. My concern is this, the lights are out, and it's dark, and need to be fixed. That is why Lee contacted RTV6. I reached out to Duke Energy and the city of Noblesville and found the city knows this area has concerns. Replacing streetlights is identified as one of the Noblesville Now capital improvement projects for the near future. I would like a timeline. You know, when are they going to be turned on? When are they going to be fixed? I don't know if they're broken. I don't know if they need to change the light bulbs. I don't know who's in charge. The city has had preliminary discussions with Duke Energy about improving safety and aesthetics in the area, which would include new energy efficient streetlights from State Road 37 to I-69 along 146th Street. But right now, there is no definite timeline. A city spokesman says funding is a factor. Working for you in Noblesville, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. And the city of Noblesville spokesman says this is not a light bulb issue, it's a wiring problem. He says some of the damage is due to field mice and other critters getting in the conducts and chewing on the wiring. Indiana's Attorney General made it official today. He is seeking a second term in office. The announcement from Curtis Hill's campaign was made at 6 a.m. It comes as Hill waits for the outcome from professional misconduct allegations that he groped four women at a party. He could lose his license to practice law. Hill has denied wrongdoing and special prosecutor declined to file criminal charges. The Indiana Supreme Court is waiting for a hearing officer's report before deciding any law license sanctions. The Republican Attorney General nominee will be picked at the state party convention next summer. Police in Johnson County arrested an Uber driver who they say was driving a paying passenger while under the influence of drugs. 56-year-old Mark Allen Atchison of Indianapolis is charged with possession of methamphetamine and drug paraphernalia and driving a vehicle while intoxicated. He was pulled over for speeding Sunday by a new Whiteland police officer. That's when the officer learned the man was an Uber driver and the woman in the back seat was his passenger. According to court documents, Atchison admitted to smoking meth and marijuana about 90 minutes before he was stopped. In Carmel, police are asking for your help in identifying this man here. They say he is wanted for burglary at an AT&T store on 116th Street around 6.30 Sunday morning. If you know who he is, call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. The State Department of Health today reported a fourth person has died from severe lung injuries caused by e-cigarette use. Three vaping-related deaths had already been reported in the state, the first one on September 6th. All of the patients are adults. The most recent death occurred in, in a person 50 to 59 years old. Still ahead at 5.30 on RTV6, concerns about speeding cars where children play. A resident reaches out to RTV6 for help. We're working to get answers. What we found out, that's at 5.30. But first, just since March, one woman's passion project has been used to reverse 40 drug overdoses. How this Kokomo mom is saving Hoosier lives. And it's been an exciting day in the weather office, and this is why. We're above freezing, 38 in Indianapolis right now. All metro area temperatures above the freezing mark. When will we push 50? Let's really push it. We'll be back after this. Easy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably. 
Call 6 Investigates continues to ask Indigo about its challenges with its new electric buses. We're also focused on its plans to improve red line service. RTV6 has learned that Indigo is looking for places where people can park their vehicles along the red line and ride the bus. The agency is looking for underutilized parking lots like possibly a church that could accommodate a park and ride program. They're also hearing from employers asking about passes for their employees to ride the bus. Only on RTV6, the Indigo leadership team is talking about their goals for the present and for the future. Consistency on our schedule, uh, and getting our technology uh, fixed so we can move uh, that part of it so customers can have real-time information, be able to purchase their fares, etc. because that will speed up and hiring enough of our personnel to ensure that we can meet the service demand. So from the red line perspective, the technology piece is critical. Yeah. We had to fix it. We had to make sure that the app works, real-time information is, is working. From the Indigo system overhaul, you know, recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. Rafael Sanchez's exclusive interview with the head of Indigo and the chair of the Indigo board continues on the RTV6 app and the IndieChannel.com. This is an RTV6 digital exclusive. Things happen, and that's why a Kokomo woman created Ship Happens. It is a service that makes life-saving medication accessible for free to Hoosiers who experience an overdose. Tonight, we recognize Antonia Sawyer with the Jefferson Award for Multiplying Good. Surrounded by family, friends, and complete strangers, Antonia Sawyer is making 665 naloxone kits for anyone who asks her for one. A project that she coordinates out of her home has become a free life-saving tool for Hoosier families. I started it because there are so many barriers that families and communities continually face in Indiana, and I wanted to reduce or remove those entirely. It's zero barrier it's you don't have to face me you don't have to feel judged it's confidential and it's in the mail it's so simple any person who needs or wants an alaxone kit can easily access antonio's ship happens facebook page there they can request an overdose reversal kit no one is immune to substance use disorder and so let us let us do our work. Let harm reduction really come to the forefront and show that our evidence-based practice really is an answer to the opioid epidemic. An answer that some Hoosiers like 34-year-old Michael Earnhardt of Kokomo have been searching for. Michael has overdosed three times. Now, almost four years in recovery. This dad of four has his family back and is making kits with Ship Happens for others who need help too. It just gives someone a second chance. And, you know, it, it gives them the same opportunity that I had. You know, you don't ever want to see anyone go out like that and you know this this gives them the chance to to get help and to find those resources that are out there for them. other volunteers like amber weaver wants to make sure no one feels the pain that she knows all too well i couldn't save her i just want to help other people today would have been her sister Amanda's 35th birthday. She lost her battle with addiction in December of last year. I do understand addiction. A lot of people think it's a choice, but it's not. It's a disease. Yes, it's a choice at first, but then it takes control over you. And I feel like a lot of people are losing their lives that maybe they just need one more chance. Antonia has now shipped almost 200 naloxone kits since March, and she's still going. So far, she has at least 40 reports of kits being used to reverse an overdose. It's hard to explain how it feels to get these messages because I don't know. They catch me off guard. You know, they. I'm driving down and a mom says, your kit revived my daughter twice today. It, how do you respond to that? You know, it's like... Oh my gosh, I need to just start driving these kids to people, you know, like is shipping fast enough, you know, and is it going to get there in time? So it's really hard to put into words. Antonia, for the work you're doing with Ship Happens, you are saving lives and giving not only the people who are getting these kids a second chance, but families to have that life with them. Congratulations on earning the Jefferson Award for Multiplying Good. It means all lives matter. It means... People with substance use disorder matter. They are people, and you're not defined by your disease. They're, they're worth it. Everybody's worth it.
Again, Antonia's naloxone kits are free to take and free to have it shipped to you. On our website, you can learn how to access these overdose reversal tools. And you can nominate someone who you know who is making a difference. Just go to our website, theindychannel.com, select the menu in the live section, and click on Multiplying Good. Really great to see that there, too. She's doing amazing work. On time now for your Storm Team 6 forecast. And it, we can agree, it's been a comfortable day out it's there. Much more. beautiful with the sunshine, too. Yeah. Never thought 40 could feel so good. <laughs> right. did you? Yeah, uh, it was emotional when I turned 40, but to hit 40 today is, is wonderful, <laughs> if that makes sense. 38 is the current temperature. The clouds have rolled in. We did have lots of sunshine early in the day, but northern half of the state now with the cloud cover. By the way, temperatures warmer down to the south. Bloomington hit 43 degrees. It's been a while. It had been since Monday that temperatures made it above the freezing mark. We've got rain down along the Gulf Coast states, some snow showers in the northeast. We just have clouds in place across central Indiana. From the satellite view to the real view, this is looking north with one of our Weather Now cameras. And Meridian Street will come to life here as the city lights start to take over and the taillights of cars. Commuters headed back north. The cloud cover may break up a little bit tonight, but I think in this situation it gets difficult uh, to really clear the skies out. And I think we'll battle clouds as well during the day tomorrow, but manage at least some sunshine. Down two degrees in Indy from the high. You're down three to 40 in blue. Bloomington, 32 is the temperature in Lafayette and Peru. Not too windy as we go for a walk this evening. Say hello to Zyla and Garner. And Amanda, you're familiar with this. So that's Zyla in the front. That's a wobble table. What is that? Do you know? I don't know. Some workout mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She finished her workout then because she's just relaxing on it now. Oh, I thought I mentioned that earlier and you said you knew what it was. So I was just... Sorry to put you on the yeah. spot. She's going to look it up. Okay. I'm wobbling now. It's Temperatures. Core strengthening for dogs. Oh, core strengthening for dogs. I thought it was a person wobble board. That's what I was talking about. Oh, so okay. they make dog ones too. It probably does the same thing for <laughs> both of us. Temperatures in the teens to low 20s first thing in the morning. During the day tomorrow, mixture of clouds and sunshine. We'll hope for partly sunny skies. About the same feel as today. Upper 30s should do it. As you start looking at temperatures down to the south, uh, close to 40 degrees. Just a little cooler than today. A nice Friday night for football. Shouldn't be many issues. Dry temperature does fall into the 20s during the game. Into the weekend, we go, notice how slow but sustained the warming trend is. 41 Saturday will jump up a degree as we get to Sunday. Sunday, if there's any real change for the second half of the weekend, a couple of showers may move into northwest Indiana. The chance for that, though, is just 20 percent. Temperatures over the weekend, Saturday 41, with a mixture of clouds and sunshine, will have more clouds on the Sunday. There are your Saturday high temperatures across the region. Just want to show you early next week, temperatures make their move at least into the upper 40s. I just couldn't quite put myself to put the big 5-0 there on Thursday. I, I like to. <laughs> you wanted to, though, didn't you? Yeah, well, I, it very well may happen, but I'm conservative. I go low, and then if we get above it, then I'm, I'm excited just like you would be. Like that. Thank it's you, Kevin. dry, by the way, seven-day forecast. Appreciate it. Well, you just have to check this out. This little rescued puppy in Missouri is getting a lot of attention because of his cute resemblance to a unicorn. Narwhal has a tail-like appendage growing from his forehead. The nearly 10-week-old puppy was rescued over the weekend and is being cared for at a facility that specializes in fostering animals with special needs. He's a very healthy puppy. The rescue group is getting flooded with requests to adopt Narwhal, but he will remain with his caretaker so they can be sure the tail doesn't grow out of proportion and cause him problems. Uh, he is adorable and he's got some good energy there, he's doesn't he? He's a cutie patootie. Yeah, he is. Hey, if you think your kids already eat too much sugar, you're not going to like this. It's now being made into a breakfast cereal and when it will be available. Days from 4.30 to 7. Hello to you. I'm Julie Grant with Court TV, and we are covering two huge trials for you today, both out of the state of Florida. First up, a quadruple homicide case happening in Tallahassee. This morning, federal prisoner and gang member James Carlos Santos took the stand and told the jury that he's the one who ordered Brandy Peters and her children killed in November of 2010. Santos says it was because she was stealing money and drugs from the cartel that he worked for. The defendant in this case, Henry Segura, 
Ugarit testified in his own defense on Wednesday, denying having anything to do with those crimes. The state says that his motivation is money, saying that he owed over $23,000 in back child support and was trying to avoid jail time for that. Well, meantime, while that case is going on, jury selection is continuing in Mark Seaver's trial happening in South Florida. He is accused of first degree murder. Prosecutors say that he hired Jimmy Ray Rogers and Curtis Wright to murder his wife, Dr. Teresa Seavers, in 2015. Rogers, you may recall, was convicted of second degree murder just last month, and Wright has pleaded guilty, giving testimony in both of those cases. As always, you can count on Court TV Live for gavel to gavel coverage. I'm Julie Grant. Now back to you in the studio. It is the new cereal that will make moms and dads cringe and kids smile. Twinkies cereal. The 90 year old golden cream filled sponge cake will soon hit shelves as a breakfast cereal in bite sized pieces. The new cereal comes more than six years after a Twinkies shortage. The cereal will be available nationwide starting late next month. <laughs> that does seem a little too, too sweet, too sugary. I don't know if that's a balanced breakfast. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Hey, if you or someone you know uses an Uber or Lyft, a warning tonight. All new at six, the unexpected charge you need to keep an eye out for. Call six investigate shows us why. Some riders say they were victims of vomit fraud. And up next on the Now Indy, got plans for tomorrow night? Well, one of these animals hopes she'll make a date with them. A permanent one special free event to help them find homes. You're watching RTV6.